listening to the Becoming Who You Are podcast, your guide to authentic living. Visit becomingwhoyouare.net for more resources, tools, and suggestions designed to help you create the life you want from the inside out. Now here's your host, Hannah. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. My name is Hannah and thank you so much for tuning in today. This week I want to talk about goals. Goals are something that can be really, really useful, but they can also be the source of much frustration and heartache as well. I've personally had a tricky history with goals of making them, but I find it hard to see them through. When I make a new goal, I usually start off brimming with enthusiasm, but somewhere along the way, I get distracted by other shiny goals, lose interest, and ultimately stop actively working towards the original goal. I still have the goal in mind, I haven't ever lost it, and it's still something that I very much want to do. But eventually I get to the point where I'm not actually doing anything to get myself there. So that's how the scenario worked for me until the beginning of this year. In January, I listened to Natalie Sisson and Natalie McNeil talk about a concept called 5x5x5 on the Suitcase Entrepreneur podcast, and I would like to offer a big hat tip to them for this idea. When I heard them talk about it, it sounded pretty neat, so I decided to go ahead and implement it. So far this year, I not only have clearly defined goals for this year, but to my surprise, I've actually enjoyed slowly but surely working towards them as well. This system is simple, no nonsense, and best of all, it works. It addresses the hardest goals of all, the big meaty challenges that require persistence. Those goals that aren't going to happen overnight and those goals that will push us beyond our comfort zone and expand our concept of what we can do. This is how it works. You start with five big, hairy, audacious goals. I think the original credit goes to Seth Godin for this term, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So please feel free to email me and correct me if I'm wrong. And these are goals that apply to the whole year. So let's say you're starting this in January, then these are goals that will run till the end of December. And the thing about big, hairy, audacious goals is that they're supposed to be challenging, but not impossible. They fall into the could do it if I really went for it category. So for example, for me, reading 125 books is one of my personal big, hairy, audacious goals for this year, but becoming an astronaut isn't. Like any goal, you're more likely to achieve a big heritage's goal if it's specific and measurable. So using the example that I just gave, read 125 books is specific and measurable, but read more is not. So if, if you're in doubt, if you're making your goals and you're wondering, okay, how do I know if this is specific and measurable? Ask yourself the question, how will I know when I have achieved this goal? In the case I just mentioned, I will know when I've achieved the goal of reading 125 books because I'll close my 125th book or I'll get to the last page of my Kindle and I'll close it and I'll be like, okay, I've I've achieved my goal now. I've read 125 books. But reading more is a much harder goal to define because it's like more compared to what? How will I know when I have read, quote, more? So once you have your specific and measurable goals, you list out five milestones for each goal. So these might be five steps you need to take in order to reach each goal or intermediate goals to reach between now and the end of the year. For example, if your goal was to visit Thailand, your intermediate goals might include costing the trip, booking flights, saving a certain amount of cash and so on. If you wanted to save $2,000 by the end of the year, you might plot out how much you would need to save by June, how much you'd need to save by September and so on to be on track for that goal. Finally, you list out five strategies for achieving each goal. These are different to milestones. Think of your strategies as the behind the scenes activities you're gonna be doing to give yourself the greatest chance of achieving your big, hairy, audacious goals. To use the examples that I just talked about, your five strategies for achieving your trip to Thailand might include asking your boss for a raise or taking on freelance work to boost your income, saving a certain amount each month, racking up as many frequent flyer points as possible, and so on. To save $2,000, your strategies might include quitting your Starbucks habit, taking home cooked meals to work instead of buying lunch, and all the many, many other things that you can do to help yourself reach that goal. So in summary, the 5x5x5 plan consists of five big, hairy, audacious goals, 
five milestones involved in working towards each big hairy audacious goal and five strategies for achieving the big hairy audacious goal. The next thing I want to talk about is how to track your big hairy audacious goals. The beauty of this system is that it not only gets you thinking about what you really want to do with your time and prevents the Ooh, shiny other goals syndrome that I experience, but it helps you also stay conscious of how close you are to achieving your goal by the end of the year. I love lists and metrics, so I created a spreadsheet of my big, hairy, audacious goals and milestones. For number-based big, hairy, audacious goals like the 125 books goal I mentioned earlier, I changed the game slightly and split my goal into monthly goals. For each measurable big, hairy, audacious goal, I record the monthly target, my actual tally and the positive or negative difference. So either how far ahead I am of my goal for numerical based goal, for number based goals or how far behind the goal I am. This means that I can review my big, hairy, audacious goals monthly and see at a glance how far ahead or behind I am. So as I record this podcast, it is now mid-May, so I've been doing this for around about four months now. And I would like to offer a few tips and thoughts based on my experience so far. The first tip is something that I learned from listening to the teen athletes talk in their podcast. And this was really, really helpful because it really took the pressure off me. In the past, when I've set myself goals, I've tended to be really hard on myself if I have fallen behind on them or I haven't achieved them. And hearing them talk about this was quite a relief. And this is a principle that I bore in mind when I was creating my own goals for this month. And that is that you're unlikely to achieve all of your big, hairy, audacious goals, but that is okay. The point is to aim high. And if you achieve three or four out of five, that is awesome. I can already tell which of my big, hairy, audacious goals I'm likely to achieve and which will be more challenging. And part of the fun for me is working out what I can do to get as close as possible to my target for the ones that I'm currently slipping a little bit behind on. I did a slight variation on the concept of five by five by five this year, and my goals turned into something that was more like 10 by five by five, because I set five work related big, hairy, audacious goals and five personal big, hairy, audacious goals for myself this year. There are definitely pros and cons to doing this, and I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. Sometimes having 10 huge goals spread across my personal and my work life feels like way too much. But on the other hand, it also helps me stay more conscious of my balance between work and play and how much attention I'm paying to the different areas of my life. My final tip is going back to something that I mentioned earlier, which is the fact that I track monthly because I'm a metrics fiend and I love recording most aspects of my life. But the original idea is to set five milestones. So while I find it helpful to review my progress monthly, there is no real right or wrong way to do this. Although it's called five by five by five, mine is more like 10 by five by 12 because I have actually got 12 milestones for most of my big hairy audacious goals. I personally find that tracking my goals monthly helps me stay more on top of them than I think I would if I was only tracking them quarterly, but it really, really is a personal decision, so I urge you to do whatever is best for you. Finally, if you were curious about what my big, hairy, audacious goals were for this year, I thought I would just share them with you very quickly. So as I mentioned, I have work-related goals and personal goals. My work-related goals are around my monthly income, the number of people subscribed to the Becoming Who You Are mailing list, which you can sign up to on my website, the number of guest posts I write and interviews I conduct, to get my first public speaking gig and contracting a virtual assistant by the end of the year to help with the necessary but time consuming behind the scenes stuff. My personal big hairy audacious goals are the reading goal I mentioned above, so reading 125 books this year, mastering specific yoga poses, speaking Spanish to a certain level, a goal to get my savings up to a certain amount, and a long distance running goal as well. Like I said, it's perhaps not the best idea to have five personal and five professional goals, but we will see. (laughs) Time will tell, and I will certainly put an update on the blog at the end of the year as to how it's all gone. The great thing about five by five by five is wherever you are in your life, Uh, Whenever you're listening to this in the year, it's never too late to create your own big, hairy, audacious goals. So this week, I challenge you to do just that. 
For extra bravery points, and if you want some personal accountability, you can also email me and let me know one or more of your big, hairy, audacious goals for the next year. Before I wrap up this episode, I just want to mention something that I have personally found really, really helpful when it comes to goal setting, and that is journaling. Journaling is something that I have talked about a lot, both on Becoming Who You Are on the blog and a little bit on this podcast as well. And right at the end, I just wanted to mention that my book, The Ultimate Guide to Journaling, is available through Amazon now, and it's also available as an audio book. So if you go to becomingwhoyouare.net and click Tools, you'll find The Ultimate Guide to Journaling listed there. And on the page on the website, you can purchase the audio book for immediate download. So it's there, it's professionally produced, and The book will tell you everything you need to know about starting and maintaining a regular journaling practice. Whether you're interested in journaling as a whole or not, it is a scientifically proven fact that if you write your goals down, you're more likely to achieve them. And if you tell people about them, you're more likely to achieve them. So give yourself the best chance possible of achieving your big, hairy, audacious goals this year. Write them down in the journal, tell close friends and family about them, and look back in 12 months time with amazement to see how far you have come. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or if you want to tell me about one of your big, hairy, audacious goals, please send me an email at hannah, that's H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net. Thanks so much for listening, and I look forward to talking to you very soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to iTunes and leave a review. You can get in touch with Hannah by emailing H-A-N-N-A-H at becomingwhoyouare.net. Don't forget to visit becomingwhoyouare.net and find out how you can use rational personal development to live an authentic life.